The impact from the tsunami in Japan continues to be studied. One question being asked is whether any of the debris from the tsunami could reach the west coast of the United States. And if so, when might that occur? On this Thank You Ocean Report, we provide a perspective on this question. They predict that the bulk of the debris would arrive sometime in 2013. That is what the NOAA model and the University of Hawaii model predict. Anir Bernea is the West Coast Regional Coordinator for NOAA's Marine Debris Program. And it is possible, that even likely, that some debris moves faster than others. It is very likely also that the debris will not arrive all at the same time. It may take a while. But we need to remember that there is uncertainty because it is very difficult to predict in advance, days, months, in this case even years in advance, wind and the currents. So the modeling prediction should be taken as a rough approximation. Is there any evidence that debris has already reached West Coast beaches? We've seen some uh, reports and some people believe that debris that was found is related to that tsunami debris, but so far we have not been able to confirm that. I asked Mr. Bernea about a conjecture that a flotilla of debris could also wind up along the west coast. You know, there's a lot of uh, debris out there in the ocean and uh, we have been collecting debris from all around the Pacific Rim for years and years. Some floats have arrived west coast and generated some interest, but we believe that it is inaccurate. The images of the debris that were captured soon after the tsunami, the fields and the patches of debris no longer exist. They dispersed in the vast North Pacific Ocean and as they make their way eastward, driven by ocean wind and current, they disperse even more and some of the debris would undoubtedly sink. So as they arrive the west coast, the proximity of the west coast, the debris will be dispersed both over large area and also over time. Not all of it would arrive at the same time. Another concern, of course, has to do with the potential for this debris to be radioactive. There is consensus among the experts that it is highly unlikely because of several reasons. First, the debris was generated over hundreds of miles and the leak into the ocean from the nuclear reactor was in one place. And second, the debris was washed out to sea by the tsunami, even in the proximity of the reactor before days to weeks before the leak occurred. Another thing to keep in mind is even if there was any contamination over time, going through the ocean, years traveling the ocean, radioactivity contamination, if there was any, would be washed away. NOAA is also working with local agencies to develop plans to address the marine debris should it arrive along the west coast. And my thanks to NOAA's near Bernea. Now to give you a closer look regarding this situation, here's a brief Now that the debris has moved out of satellite view, and with currents and winds in the Pacific constantly changing, there is no guarantee that the debris will stay on the predicted path. Items will sink along the way, or break up and disperse in many directions. 
Despite these unknowns, NOAA and its partners are collecting data, assessing possible impacts, and making preparations in case debris does wash ashore. The 2011 tsunami in Japan reminds us that the devastation that happens on land can also become a marine debris issue at sea. For more updates on the Japan tsunami marine debris topic, please visit marinedebris.noaa.gov. And remember, the ocean takes care of us. Let's return the favor. To learn more, visit thankyouocean.org. I'm Jerry Kay.